as we go into the penultimate stage of this year's Vuelta a España and the real proper last road stage, um, I thought I'd make a video of how Richard Carapaz slash Hugh Carthy can win the Vuelta. Obviously, it's going to be very hard. The GC standings are here. Richard Carapaz, 45 seconds behind Primoz Roglic and Hugh Carthy, 53. I can't imagine Dan Martin or Enrique Mass winning it unless there's a big step scale ambush, but that looks quite unlikely at the moment. So on most of the the uphill finishes so far there haven't really been huge time gaps um there was a decent gap at the end of this stage up to formigal um and then obviously the angleru and then up to like they weren't really huge gaps on any of these climbs really um they were more like uh if we go through it here like so on the first one like they not really huge differences like here hugh carty and Carapaz gained like 30 seconds on Roglic, which was quite significant, but he had some issues with his rain jacket. And all the rest of them, they look pretty similar. Roglic had slight difficulties here, but again, he only lost 26 seconds to Hugh Carthy. Okay, it was like at the very end, and maybe if they'd known they were weaker and another team had been there, he could have got more time, but it wasn't really that big. Again, on this stage, they all came in pretty much the same time. Um, and on this real steep finish, Carapaz got binned by Roglic in the last kilometre. But apart from that, they were pretty similar. And like the time gaps from first to seventh were like a minute. And that finish was pretty hard. So, again, like the question is, how can he beat them? Because we know he's got the strongest team. If we go if we go to the start list, um, you'll be able to see that the, the strongest team by far is Yama Visma. They've got George Bennett, Demoulin, Hessing, Hostella, Setkus. But the the only real people who matter on this team are Setkus and Vingegaard. Because the rest of them, yeah, they're strong. But the issue is, is that when it comes to the final mountaintops finishes, like the final couple kilometers, Roglic always has Vingegaard there, who I'd never even heard of from before this World Cup. He's absolutely outrageous rider. And Sepp Kuss as well. And obviously Sepp Kuss has literally been like there until the very end. He's probably arguably almost as strong, if not stronger than Roglic on some of the stages, like definitely up to... Um, Angleru, uh, Kuss was looking a million dollars. So it is quite hard to really, you know, actually put them in difficulty because if we look at the rest of the teams. Ineos have a, not a great team here. Amador looks good. Uh, Van Vaal looks okay. Souza, I don't know what's happened to him. He can't seem to ride a bike anymore. He was like outrageous recently and that now he's been quite disappointing. Rivera's gone home and obviously the other ones, um, Froome's not in top condition. And then like you look at Astana, they have an all right team, but like Vlasov's not that high up on GC. And then Dan Martin, to be fair, he does have the, probably the second strongest domestique, which is Mike Woods, um, to help him line it out. But again, barring McLaren, yeah, they've got some more right people, but Wildpools is quite far down. So this is the issue, is that you've got, one, an outrageously strong Roglic, no denying it. Two, an outrageously strong team, including Sepp Kuz. And three, you've got a mountaintop finish, which isn't too hard. So it's going to be really hard to try and win the Vuelta. But if I was in EOS and I was in the team car, for tomorrow and I was thinking tonight how can we win or if I was Hugh Carthy's DS and was thinking how can I win well I think if we look at the the stage it goes up to Alto de Covatilla um and you know it's not an easy climb at all but it, but it's not a hard it, I don't think it's hard enough to get a minute back which is you know more or less what they need um if we look these are the preceding climbs which we'll go through in a minute but if we look at Alto de Covatilla it's also supposed to be a headwind as well tomorrow which if it's a headwind this story is not going to happen because on a headwind climb to gain a minute it's impossible um in my opinion with the, with the teammates but if it is a tailwind and we're going to assume it is which i don't think it is unfortunately then you know we'll go through potentially what's happened so obviously the first couple kilometers they're going to be riding at 20 30k an hour so you can't attack there you then got the hardest kilometer comes at kilometer four to five which is 10.4 and then it's pretty hard for like the next two three kilometers but it's not hard enough. In my opinion, I don't think you can't, can put a minute into Roglic unless he has a big, big crack on a stage like this. Because the issue I think you have, or in order to put a minute, what you've got to do is you've got to set a ridiculous tempo from minute one to basically put Roglic in as much pain as possible and hope that you're stronger. And also to distance all his domestiques, apart from probably Kuz, who will still be there. Um, so then let's say you've done that. You've caught down to the final. You've got, let's say, Mike Woods on the front, drilling it for Hugh Carthy. Hugh Carthy attacks. Roglic and Kuz can't follow. Or Kuz, uh, Roglic can't follow. So Kuz is back with Roglic and pacing. To get a minute back on this climb, like, realistically, where is it going to be that it's going to be strung out enough? It'll be maybe with, like, 9K in, like, two kilometres. I don't think you can do it. Even maybe if it was three kilometres out. To get a minute back in three kilometres, it's so hard. 
And I think with Kuz pacing, unless Roglic literally explodes, I think that's very unlikely. So I think if you want to do it and you want to try and bin Roglic, you've got to do it earlier. But you've also got to put his team under outrageous pressure from minute one. So if I was Ineos, you've got to be looking at this, the, the route here and thinking, are there any uncategorized clients? Is there anything we can do? And I think what you've got to do is you've got to get someone in the break, number one. So I think Froome, if you get him in the break, that would be really, really good. The ideal person you want in a break, in my opinion, would be Dylan Van Baal because he'd be able to get over the climb with a break. He'd probably be able to sit on quite a lot and then he could help so much because it's lumpy, this stage. It's got a fair amount of elevation. But if we look at all the climbs, none of them are particularly hard until you really get to the last one. This one here, 14K at 5%, that's just not hard enough, really. Um, and, you know, we can we can go down here on the first climb, 14K at 5%. OK, it is slightly steeper. It's more like 6 7%. But again, that's a big ring climb for these boys. You know, so this is probably where, you know, the break could go on this climb here. And this is where you think actually all the teams need to like sort of join together and really exert as much pressure as they can on Lotto and or Jumbo Visma on the beginning climbs and get a fat break going. But then they have to make sure that it doesn't get too much so that they can use the riders in the latter part of the stage. Because I think then think in order to get away on every single one of these climbs you've got to have a team riding super hard on the front to try and drop as many people as possible but you can see there's just not that many climbs 5.6k at five percent these aren't like okay it's a third week of the grand tour for sure but they're not crazy hard and so i think it, it like i still believe it's going to be really hard but you what you've just you've just got to exert a lot of pressure early on you've got to get people in the break and then ultimately you just have to cross your fingers and really hope roglic has a bad day um but I mean, if you can get to the bottom of this climb, let's, if you can get to the bottom of the de Cova, de la Cova tier with like, you know, let's say Ineos have Van Baal up the road, you've got like Hugh carthy has got Mike Woods there, and Roglic maybe only has Vingegaard and Koos left, or maybe Koos and de Moulin, or something like that, then I think you've got a chance. But in order to drop all of the Lotto and all the Yen of Jumbo Visma, sorry, their team name changed, um, Jumbo Visma boys, I think it's going to be really hard. And I think. You know, th this climb here could be pivotal for the last, the second to last climb because, OK, it's not that hard again. But if people really launch it here, you could drop quite a lot of potentially domestiques at this point. And then, you know, you've got the opportunity at least to just race really aggressively on the last climb, just set a stupid tempo to begin with and then see if Roglic is, has any weakness. But I just don't think he is. I think it like it's going to be really hard. And the time gap's just... They're just not that big. Like, this is the issue. If we look at like, the results overall, oh, sorry. Um, if we look at the time gaps here, they're, they're just not very big. Um, well, they're not really, like, they're not big, but they're also not insignificant. Like, you know, in general, if you say this is a pretty close race, and it is, but it's not a hard enough stage. It's not like, you know, one of those ones where you've got three mountaintop, three massive mountains that go up to 2,000 metres. And then, yeah, you know, fair enough. There's a big chance of putting a minute into someone. And, you know, Roglic isn't great in the in a, in a third week of a Grand Tour. Everyone knows this. But I still can't see it. And if we look at the preceding stages, like this is today's stage. OK, it wasn't easy, but it wasn't impossible. The day before was like, OK, it, again, it was like six hours in the saddle. But it's not like Roglic was riding threshold or probably at any of it. This stage, again, it, OK, it wasn't easy, but like it wasn't properly hard. The last properly hard stage they had was stage 12. So I don't think really they have a good chance. And the last stage is obviously pan flat. So nothing's going to happen. So in order to bridge it, it's just going to be hard. Um, but as I said before, get people in the break, really just set a stupid temper. But I don't think any one team is strong enough to do it. It's going to have to be an ENEOS EF sort of combined effort in order for this to happen. And the question is, does Hugh Carthy back himself to win it? I mean, I'm... I love Hugh Carthy and I think he has a good chance. He's looked, in my opinion, after Roglic, the strongest in the climbs, um, really. Like, he's he's just looked super good. He's had a bit of bad luck, I guess. Like, he seems to be quite far down um, a couple of stages. Like, he he's, hasn't been the best at the, you know, the real explosive finishes. But on the main big climbs, like former gal, Anglerou, he's looked the best. So, I think Hugh's got a good chance. Um, but it doesn't help that Roglic gained six seconds today. Um, that's really not ideal. But... It just goes to show you that Roglic is such a punchy guy. Like, it's a joke. I don't understand how he gets up mountain passes and can sprint so well. But anyway, it is what it is. Um, and those are my thoughts. Obviously, leave your comments below. How would you beat Primoz Roglic? 
I, I don't think it's going to happen, but that's how what I really hope it does because I really enjoy R Richard Carabaz and Hugh Carthy, how they ride. That's just a lot more exciting than Mr. Boring Primoz Roglic. Um, but yeah, cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.